we have a lot of different um, small equipment, we'll call it. We have the HD sensor, we have our wave sensor, we have our easy cam intra oral um, camera, and we also have our easy ray air, easy ray air handheld uh, x ray. Most of these are going to be part of our conversation today. And uh, more than likely, if you are using your Easy Dent I software, you do have one of these, these um, uh, devices. So let's start off with talking about our HD sensor. You know, so we do have three different sizes for our HD sensor. It comes in the one, the 1.5 and the two. And so we do have all of our sensors there. Um, that's our HD sensor. You may also have your, uh, your wave sensor, which is actually a soft rubber coated sensor for patient comfort. We do have the same sizes, the one, the one and a half and two uh, that you may be using. Uh, all of those uh, sensors are plug and play uh, USB and really adapt to all the different sensor holders, most all of them on the market. Here I have my, my RIN kit, the XCP kit. Uh, there are troll bite sensors. Uh, we have our snap array. So different, different holders, really, if you're used to using, if you're coming from film or phosphor plates or even another um, uh, sensor, we do have uh, the sensor holders that will make that transition very simple for you. Let's talk about the Easy Rare Air handheld. Uh, but that is going to be our handheld x ray. I do have one here. Uh, it is about 3.75 pounds, which is about 30% less than other handhelds on the market. One thing I really like about this is it sits flat on the table. So you don't have to set it on its side. It does sit flat. Uh, we do have our on and off switch here, turns the machine on and off. And to charge this, we can charge this with our charging button right there. Uh, Second life, it takes about uh, 1,000 x-rays before it does need to be recharged. So usually that is going to be one full day of uh, charging for your office. And the other thing on here I would like to point out is the digital panel on the back. So it's very simple. Touch buttons on here, your time, uh, man, woman, child, and then your tooth setting here. So very simple to use, uh, very lightweight and easy to uh, manipulate through there. So a little bit of ease of use on using this Easy Ray Air. Um, I wanted to play a short clip video that will go through um, uh, the, the digital touchpad readout. Because when you first turn it on, there is a passcode we can go through and then looking at the ease of use of using uh, the Easy Ray Air. So I'm gonna go ahead and play that video. It's about a minute. We'll start by lifting the Easy Ray portable and move the switch from off to on position. From there, we'll then enter our password on the back control panel. Turn the jog dial to the left, press the button. Turn the jog dial again to the left, press the button, and then press it one more time to set the password to 000. Now we can choose our tooth type between incisor, premolar, molar, and bite wing. Press the button to set it. We then can choose between adult or child, press the jog dial again, and lastly, we have the ability to adjust our set exposure time between five hundredths of a second up to one second. Press the jog dial to set your exposure time. And now you're ready to begin capturing extra images. So that was really a quick overview of using the Easy Ray Air um, and using that jog panel or the dial and the digital readout at the back of the, the device there. So if you do have any questions on that, uh, we will be taking that, you know, after our session today. Uh, but, you know, very simple to use uh, handheld x-ray. We're going to look at the Vatec Easy Dent Eye software. Uh, specifically, we're going to take a look at workflow and setting this up uh, to capture images all the way through reports. So today you can expect to learn about our main menu settings, uh, setting up autosave, changing our teeth codes, uh, where to add your office information and your office email. We're going to look at the patient tab for adding a patient to the software and searching. Look at the acquisition tab to select layouts, capture images, and also look at retakes. The viewer tab for viewing images, selecting layouts, and saving your layouts. Also 
sending those images to your reports, and then finally an overview of your report tab. So let's go ahead and get started. First, let's go up to our main menu under Easy Dent Eye, and we're going to go down to Settings, and want to go to the General tab and Teeth Code. We can choose our Universal System or FDI. We can also go up to Linkage and Email and add your office email, SMTP server, password, name, and port. If you are unaware of your SMTP server address, I would suggest getting that set up with your IT department. Lastly, let's look at our practice information over here. You can add your practice information, also a logo on the lower right. One other thing we want to look at uh, in our settings tab is going to be our acquisition tab here. We want to ensure that the IO sensor is set to auto DB save, which will, once you acquire your images, it will automatically save those. If you're using an intraoral camera, I would select the same thing, auto DB save. There are a lot of other settings here. We can look at those in other training videos. I'm going to click on OK. All right, so next let's look at the overview of the EasyDent Eye software. At the top, you have your different tabs, your patient tab for patient information and images off to the right, your acquisition tab where we're going to go to capture images, your viewing tab to view those images, consult, which includes some consultation videos, and finally reports where we can set up our reports specifically for uh, reports creating reports, multiple images, single images, sending those out via email or exporting those to the desktop. Below our tabs here, we have some commonly used tools. This is where we can add our patient. I would simply click on the plus, add my patient here. We will be revisiting that here shortly. We can modify our patient, uh, delete the patient. So you notice as I, as I hover over these, it will uh, tell us what the individual icons do. Let's go all the way over here. Another important tab is going to be our help, which is your user manual. All the way to the right, you have your patient's information. Let's look at our left toolbar. Here's how we can search for our patients uh, by typing in the patient name. If I click on search here, uh, once the patient's name is typed, I can click on the plus here and search by modality. Any of our modalities and also time frames, and then I would click search. Below that, we have our recently acquired. You can see here on my software, I have the most recent 15 patients that can be set to show no patients all the way up to 30. And then recently viewed. If you have uh, your software set up for multiple doctors, you can choose your doctors through here. I have mine set for all to show all of the patients there. And that is going to be kind of an overview of our patient tab. You can see the patient's photo and patient's information here. So let's go ahead and start. I'm going to click on search and I'm going to type in FMX. And that will bring up my patient that is named FMX, chart number and birth date. And I, to add that patient, I went up to the plus and it was important to type in the last name, first name, gender, and birth date. Uh, optional, you can type in your other information down at the bottom. And if you want to add a photo, click here on Photo Open, and that's where you would add your photo. So once I have my patient showing here, let's look off to the right, and this is where our image is going to be shown. And yet at the top, you have an option for showing by date or by modality. I have mine set to date and all, so I can see if I hover here, it tells us these are captured images. Here's an intraoral sensor, extraoral bite wings, listed as a panorama, a couple other images, CBCT, and now my individual shots down here. You note when I hover on these, this tells us what tooth number, what modality, and the date they were taken. And as I scroll down, you can see my full suite of images using the wheel on my mouse scroll back up. At the bottom, I do have my reports here. Uh, off to the lower right, I can enlarge images or minimize this down to show our full suite of images in the smaller format. I'm going to go ahead and change mine back to about the middle right here. Let's navigate over to our acquisition tab. 
Select the Acquisition tab at the top of the Dentai window. First, we will look at the Change Layout options where we can choose from either default I.O. sensor mounts or custom mounts which we have created. You'll see all your mounts throughout this window. Right-click to set the default mount. You'll notice the mount has been changed to our selected 18 FMX. Next, we'll review the Layout Editor. Under Main Menu, select FMX Layout Editor. Here you are able to create custom mounts. Options include New Mount, Delete Mount, and Duplicate Mount. First, we will select our mount. In this case, we're going to use a 4 byte wing. We are going to duplicate that, and we will rename this 4 byte wing 2 pa then select OK. We can now modify the tiles and drag and drop tiles to our desired custom layout. Here we are going to add two vertical PAs by the tile icon on the upper right. We we'll also need to ensure the tiles are properly labeled for the proper tooth or desired tooth. Double click on the selected tile. Here we will label these 8, 9 and select OK. For our next tile we will look at 24, 25 and we will also end up rotating this tile and have the arrow pointing down. Once completed you will see the name of the custom mount on the list. Select OK and save to close out of the FMX Layout Editor. Navigate to Change Layout and select the desired mount. Once selected, right-click and select OK. There are two workflow options, a default sequence and the ability to customize your workflow. If I uncheck default sequence, I can then deselect each tile number. You're now able to renumber in the order you would like to capture. And select store. This custom sequence is specific to the local computer where the changes were made. Plug in the I.O. sensor, noting the sensor has been recognized. You do have a filtering option of 1 through 7. Here we have selected the default sequence, followed by ready, where we are ready to capture our image. Due to the cone cut, we will retake the image. The skip feature allows us to skip over individual or multiple tiles. Once the series is completed, all images will be automatically saved, noted by the saved icon on top of each image. If you do not see this, go to Main Menu, Acquisition, and ensure Auto DB Save has been selected for future images. For single image capture, double right click on a tile. This allows the user to capture a single image out of sequence. Next, let's look at our viewer tab. We've just went to the acquisition tab, taken all of our images, and we're gonna go over to our viewer tab to view those images. We still have all of our tabs at the top. In this case, we have certain icons that will help us manipulate the image, the panning tool, magnifying, drawing, I'm sorry, measurement, drawing, and then our reset image. Also, our drop down with a couple other options, measurement, subtools, annotation tools, capturing, and then etc. 
Off to the left, we have our windowing brightness and contrast, some filters, we can do implant planning, drawing our canal, and then our change layout here. So this is the default window you should be seeing. You see one large image at the top, and down at the bottom, you can scroll across to see your individual images. If I hover over that, it will tell us what images we're looking at. I can also take these and left click and drag these into my main window here. Let's look at some additional windows we can choose or different additional layouts. So if I go over here to change layout, I can come in here and the default is this one by one. Notice the gold band again, it's gonna show us one window. I have an option to add three layouts over to the left. So what I'm gonna do is go to, I'm on camera, let's go over to sensor. Next, let's look at our viewer tab. Once we've acquired our images, to view those images, we go to our viewer tab. This is your default window, and you can see your host of images, your suite of images at the bottom. And I'm using the wheel on my, my mouse to scroll through. Uh, if I left click and drag, I can add images into my window here. Just left clicking and dragging our images to the top. We do have options to change our layout, so I'm going to come over here to change layout. And we can add three layout favorites off to the left. Note your one by one, one of which will be your default. So let's go to IO sensor. I'm going to scroll down to where I find my four bite wings. And I'm going to, so we have a lot of options here, four bite wings, four bite wings, top and bottom side to side, four buttons at the bottom with one window at the top. So I would encourage you to go through and look at these different options because they all have different functions. So I'm gonna right click, add this as a favorite. Also going to right click, add this as a favorite. And lastly, we'll right click and do our side by side as a favorite. Hit okay. You can see I have three favorites over to the left. Click on the top one, it shows our film strip at the bottom, our four by wing layout here, with our one image at the top. This gives me the option to scroll through the bottom, pull up my any extra oral images or any images I may have stored at the bottom, and also double click on my um, by wing layout here. If I click on the X here, it takes me back to my four by wings that I have just taken and captured. Let's go over here to this tab, all. This will allow us to search by timeline. We just want to look at one tooth of a certain date. We can click and it will show now, it just shows one of one. Whereas before I said all and it shows two of two in that tile right there. I'm just clicking across for that. Our next layout that I have set is going to be our four by wings at the bottom and one image at the top. Now note that we do not have access to any of our other images with just the images that are assigned to that tooth there. And then lastly, at the bottom, I do have my side by side where I can change my date to current date. I could also come here, change this back to our 2017 or let's go back to our 2017 here. Double click on a tile, double click on a tile. Now I have my side by side. Click on the X click on the X, takes us back. So under change layout, you do have the ability to change your layouts by right clicking and setting as a default or adding the favorites. Adding the favorites will throw add these three over here on the left. And I'm gonna go back to my top icon here where I have my one window and my four by wings and my film strip at the bottom. So let's talk more about viewing our images. I can right click on my image if I need to edit. Image edit. This will allow me to flip my image. 
This will also allow me to assign my tooth number. Let's say I've taken the image in the wrong tile. I can come here to IO sensor, click on my tooth, let's click on the adult, click on the tooth itself, and reassign the number there. You can also change your teeth code to adult and child. Once you do that, it will automatically assign to that tooth number and tile. Next, let's look at sending our images to our report tab and console tab. So I'm going to click here. Let's go down to our original image on 9-15 of 2017. You can see my four byte wings. Also, you can double click on the upper left of each window and it will enlarge that to one window. So double click here. It takes us back to our two windows. So double click, double click. So I'm going to double click my four byte wings to one window. I'm going to go to my drop down here. You can see I do have my capture option. So when I click on capture, this is how we would send this to a report. So if I click Hover over this, this tells us send to report. And that adds this to our report tab. And you can see my one, two, three, four byte wings in there. And I've set up my uh, layout at the top. Let's go back to our viewer tab. And we have our other options that we can explore through here, other tools specifically to our software, different capture tools, viewing tools, measurement tools, annotation, and other tools there. And that is going to be a review of our viewer tab where we went in to change layout, went to IO sensor, right clicked, add the favorites for our three different uh, layouts, hit OK, and we can have those populated through here. And we went up to our drop downs capture other options here, but capture we went and we sent to report, which sends your images directly to your report. Now that we've looked at our viewing tab, let's go over to our last tab, our reports tab. Under report tab, you have different layouts here. Create a new report, add a page, add your image box, printing options, settings, DICOM print, and then your drop downs here, of course, export, export via email or export to your desktop. We do have various templates and if I go to change template we can choose from our templates here and as I scroll the wheel on a mouse it will show us our available templates. Here I right clicked set as default you can see the gold band and what that does is put our image at the top and a text box at the bottom. So now you can see my image box and text box. So as I scroll through my images down here, I could go to my IO sensor and drag into that image box. Double click here, type in my text or my notes and annotation, and then this would be my, uh, my report would be set up. Once that is set, I can go up to view and go over to export which will automatically attach this to the email I'm going to make sure we went into settings and set your email up and tested that with your IT department we can convert our report to PDF or any of the following and our image convert image to original is going to be um, we can follow original being DICOM or any of our other options here next I would type the person we are sending the email to, the subject, and then our body of our email and hit send, and it will send directly from your EasyDent I software. If I go back up to my report and go over to export, this will allow me to save this to a particular folder on my desktop or in my PC. Here are the uh, available formats, PDF all the way through TIFF file and then click on save. You do have the option of saving your reports. So once I have my report created, I can click save report to database, name my report and click save. 
and this will be saved under your patient tab. As you can see, I have my three reports saved in my main patient tab window. If I double click here, it takes us back to our report tab. If I need to delete this report, I'm going to come over here to open report, right click on this, and delete. And that will delete our report. Now if I go back to my tab here, you can see I have my two tabs at the bottom. Thank you.